Welcome to our tutorial on digital electronics and in this tutorial we're going to discuss about the ring counters. Okay, so uh, the ring counters, as you can see over here, are basically a type of you know synchronous counters. Okay, so they're just a type of you know synchronous uh, counters that are constructed using shift registers. So they're just you know constructed using uh, shift registers. So we'll just employ uh, the serial in, serial out shift register over here in order to you know construct it. So uh, this I'll just you know pen it down over here. The serial in, serial out shift register that's being used to construct the ring counters and uh, in order to do so in this tutorial we'll just use you know D flip-flops okay so if I just you know go forward and uh, draw the um, the circuit of a um, serial in serial out shift register then that would you know basically look somewhat like this okay so since it's the D flip-flop so that's the D1 input okay and that's the Q1 and that's Q1 bar okay so there you go since it's a negative edge uh, triggered D flip-flop as you can see uh, from the um, diagram okay so there it is again we'll have okay we're just gonna make here you know four bit um, a ring counter. So we're going to just uh, draw the circuit diagram of a 4-bit ring counter over here. So we'll just need, you know, uh, four flip-flops since each flip-flop, you know, can basically store a single uh, binary data. So we'll need four flip-flops over here in order to construct a 4-bit ring counter. Okay, so just uh, having that uh, said, okay, just kindly, uh, you know, bear with me for some time. I'll just finish uh, drawing this diagram, okay. So now since it's a, uh, you know, uh, the um, since it's a synchronous circuit, so it has a common clock line, which is uh, just you know given over here. So apart from that, the stages, as uh, I mean, uh, the D and the Q outputs of the previous stages, uh, is just connected with the D inputs to the next higher stage, and the uh, output from the fourth. Uh, you know, uh, D flip flop is just you know, fed into the D input of the first flip flop. So there you go. This is flip flop number one. That's two, three, and this is flip flop number four. Okay. So apart from that, if we're just gonna uh, construct uh, this, uh, I mean, the uh, circuit of a, a ring counter using uh, the you know the serial in serial out shift register. So this is basically a diagram of the serial in serial out shift register. Then we need to use the preset um, input on uh, the uh, d I mean on the first D flip-flop so it's present on all the D flip-flops basically but we're just uh, hi I mean just showing here uh, that of the um, first flip-flop as it's being used over here so since the others are not in use so we're just you know avoiding uh, further confusion in the diagram so okay so here you can see the preset input is just an active low uh, input to the flip-flop which is just you know upon uh, giving an active low input over here the preset input the uh, D1 flip-flop would just have a logic level 1 output okay so they therefore Q1 would just send to the logic 1 level upon uh, activation or rather yeah act activation of this uh, preset input right over here so basically uh, since we're using D flip-flops okay so if you just you know uh, take a quick look at the uh, truth table of the D flip-flop okay so under the clock pulse okay the, that's the D input and the Q, Q bar outputs so when um, a D flip-flop you know has a D input equal to 1 so under the uh, given clock pulse Q would be set to 1 and Q bar would be set to 0 and upon uh, keeping D uh, at the uh, logic level 0 then a Q is set to 0 and Q bar to 1 so basically this is the truth table of the you know D flip-flop okay so just write it down truth table of the D flip-flop okay there it is fine so now if we just you know move on to the uh, state table of this you know uh, counter over here so we're giving Q1 Q2 Q3 and there goes Q4 so and here's the clock okay so we're gonna obtain the outputs from the Q uh, terminals of each of the flip-flops respectively okay and now uh, let me just uh, say that uh, the um, ring counter can basically you know um, move through n states okay so here n okay small n basically uh, represents the number of flip-flops being used to construct the circuit of the ring counter so basically the ring counter moves through n states which is exactly the number of flip-flops that are being used over here so since here we're just using uh, you know four flip-flops to construct this four-bit ring counter so this ring counter would just move through four 
states or rather four modulus so that's why it's also referred to as a mod 4 ring counter also okay so this is of course the uh, you know simplest shift register counter under discussion so okay without much further delay I'll just move on to the uh, functioning of the circuit so upon loading um, the output of the first flip-flop that's Q1 to the logic 1 level okay using the preset inputs the uh, first output stage of the uh, counter is basically uh, just, you know just looks somewhat like this so this is just referred to as the zero it state okay and now upon uh, the arrival of the uh, first clock pulse right over here so in order to be uh, precise upon the arrival of the uh, negative edge of the first clock pulse what happens is that uh, since Q1 has a logic level 1 at its output and it's just feeding the uh, D input of flip-flop 2 uh, with uh, the same logic level one signal so upon the arri i mean uh, upon the you know arrival of the f uh, first clock pulse i mean the negative edge of the first clock pulse what happens is that the output of uh, q2 would just change to logic level 1 so previously uh, the q2 q3 and q4 were at logic level 0 so now upon the arrival of the negative edge of the first clock pulse q2 moves on to the uh, logic level 1 signal and while you know uh, Q1 having you know uh, a logic level 0 uh, from Q4 at its D input would just move on to the logic level 0 state while Q3 would be and at the logic level 0 as well as Q4 so basically the state changes from uh, I mean state I mean just it, you know it just undergoes a change to something uh, like this okay so this is regarded as the uh, stage 1 over here so that's stage 0 the stage 1 okay and then upon the arrival of the subsequent clock pulses what happens is that this uh, logic level one that's the, the uh, single bit that's being stored I mean the uh, logic level one bit okay just you know uh, keeps shifting from um, the outputs of each flip-flop until the uh, that of the last flip-flop is reached so these are the states two and three respectively so you can see here uh, the whole uh, circuit of, of this uh, ring counter basically you know functions uh, as you know nothing different from uh, that of the serial in serial out shift registers okay so here as you can see the uh, logic level one uh, signal uh, bit is just you know get getting transferred from the output of Q1 to that of Q2 to Q3 and finally to Q4 and then when it reaches Q4 over here okay so whenever the output is just uh, you know one and triple zero I'm sorry triple zero one okay so then what happens is that upon the arrival of the subsequent clock pulse the whole uh, you know uh, bit pattern at the output just changes to one triple zero as the the output Q4 feeds the input D1 through this feedback path okay so there you say okay so therefore uh, you can see here uh, getting uh, the next clock I mean the negative edge of the next clock pulse this whole thing and it changes to, um, the bit pattern changes to that which was available at the very first stage so the whole thing in you know, a reverts back to its previous stage where it just counted its I mean just started its counting journey so basically here we can see that the whole counter okay passes from the state 0 through to state 3 so basically it passes through four states as you know described before and that's why it just you know um, called a mod 4 ring counter since it passes through four stages so the ring counter circuit can you know also be made to pass through more than uh, four stages and in that way we have to you know increase the number of flip-flops okay so uh, depending upon the number of stages that we want the ring counter to pass through so if we would just you know wish that uh, the circuit would pass through 10 stages then we would require you know 10 flip-flops so we would need to set the I mean uh, sorry over here that's too small we would need to uh, I mean need to set the small n re equal to 10 in order to make the ring counter or rather we need to use you know 10 flip-flops to construct a ring counter that's capable of you know traversing through 10 stages of counting okay so there it is uh, the uh, table of the ring counter over here so if you would like to see the state diagram it would you know look somewhat like this okay so it just starts its journey from uh, the level one triple zero which is regarded the zero level and then goes through to the uh, state one zero one double zero okay and then to double zero one zero and then finally through to uh, triple zero one okay and then back again to the state one triple zero so this is basically the state diagram as you can see over here for the uh, ring counter
Okay, so now apart from that, if we just uh, want to, you know, uh, show you the uh, timing diagram that the uh, ring counter basically, you know, uh, has, or rather it can be constructed somewhat this way. So here's the uh, clock input, okay, and there we have the uh, Q1, and there goes Q2, and then we have Q3, and finally we get to see Q4. Okay, so there it goes. So these are the time access for each of the uh, outputs as well as the clock signal respectively. So here if we just, you know, uh, let's use a yellow color, okay. So the clock inputs or rather the clock pulses just arrive at the regular intervals. So upon the first negative edge of the first clock pulse, okay. So whenever the uh, negative edge of the first clock pulse arrives, so before that Q1 used to be in the logic 1 state. So upon the arrival of the first, uh, I mean the first clock pulse's negative edge, so it just reverts back from the logic level 1 to logic level 0, and then it again, you know, comes uh, to, or rather, not here, sorry there. So the Q2 uh, just, you know, goes back to the logic level 1 from the logic level 0 and just continues till it encounters another you know negative edge of the next I mean of the second clock pulse okay so there you go and then again when uh, at this moment Q3 would just rise up and would continue its journey till it encounters the uh, negative edge of the third clock pulse and then when Q3's output just falls off from logic level 1 to logic level 0 the output of Q4 rises from uh, the logic level 0 to logic level 1 and continues till it encounters the negative edge of the fourth clock pulse so after four clock pulses we would see that uh, the um, Q1 output again goes back to logic 1 level again and then again the same story follows throughout okay so there you go the same story throughout okay and uh, it continues throughout as long as the counter is just active okay so there you go so basically this is the state as you can see here one triple zero okay and this is the state zero one double zero and again uh, zero double zero one zero and finally two triple zero one and then again back to one triple zero in the uh, as it was uh, seen in the very first state of the ring counter so that's uh, here uh, we can see uh, the uh, timing diagram of this uh, circuit okay so there you go so now apart from that if you want to you know construct uh, the ring counter let's say you want to construct the ring counter using jk flip flops then the circuit would look somewhat similar to the type of diagram that I'm just going to show you over here so since it's a 4-bit ring counter so we're going to have you know 4 JK flip-flops so there it is so here also we just utilize the you know a negative edge trigger JK flip-flops so that's the J1 K1 inputs and that's the Q1 and Q1 bar outputs so just give me a while I just uh, you know finish drawing uh, the uh, diagram over here so other than that it's not you know possible to you know explain as you know uh, by now so that uh, just kindly bear with me uh, for some time while I just you know quickly finish drawing the diagram it's almost there okay so there it is the fourth output that's Q4 and that's Q4 bar so kindly don't mind uh, the uh, diagram getting a bit obscured over here that's uh, the limitation of my you know drawing skills as never good at that since childhood so since it's a uh, you know synchronous circuit so basically it requires a common clock pulse as you can see over here and now uh, the connections uh, from the uh, output of the first uh, flip-flop to the input I mean J input of the next flip-flop is as follows over here and finally the fourth output just feeds into the J input of the first flip-flop and apart from uh, that we would always also have the you know Q bar inputs connecting or rather feeding the K inputs of the uh, next or rather higher flip-flops and the fourth uh, Q bar output from the fourth flip-flop that is you know just feeds into the K input of the first flip-flop uh, in this way so this is you know ring counter using uh, JK flip-flops so that's ring counter using JK flip-flops okay so that's basically the circuit diagram and its functioning and the states are just the same as that of the uh, previous ring counter circuit as I've shown you over here with deep flip-flops. So just having that said, we come to, come to the end of our tutorial on ring counters. Hope you've enjoyed it and don't forget to watch our next tutorial on digital electronics. So till then, it's goodbye for now and thanks for watching.